Hi, everybody at the Sacramento Craft Hunger Walk. Um, I'm Heather Wilson, and I am the CWS staff person for your walk. And I wanted to start by saying thank you. Thank you so much for walking, uh, planning, raising funds, all the wonderful things you do that support the needy in your local area and across the world and for supporting Church World Service. And should you have any questions or concerns or uh, just uh, want to talk, you can reach me at uh, H-W-I-L-L-S-O-N at cwsglobal.org. Yes, my last name is Wilson with two L's and people get confused with that. So anyways, back to the thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And with that, I wanted to share with you that I was just in Kenya visiting our programs. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about what your fundraising does in Kenya. Um, and I need to share my screen. So give me one second. All right. Well, we're going to start this slideshow. And it does have um, two co-workers names on it because we did present this uh, to um, a bunch of people a few weeks ago. Uh, but uh, the beginning part is mine. And so I will go ahead and just show you so you have a vision of what it is. Okay. So in Kenya, we were able to go to um, Katui County. We flew into Nairobi. Katui County is about 40 or 50 miles south of uh, Nairobi. And what it is, is when you're driving there, all you see is basically desolation because it has been under a drought for so long that when you cross these big, beautiful riverbeds, there's no water in them. They are just the bright red dirt that they have there. Uh, like Georgia has red clay, they Kenya has red dirt. Um, so you have to wrap your mind around that difference when you're in Kenya looking at things. Well, anyways, when you're driving, you're crossing these dry river beds, and then what you see is you see um, dry land. You see a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fields of dry, almost burnt up corn fields. Um, just kind of imagine in the Midwest, our dry fields in the fall that, you know, they leave up and harvest uh, real late. It looks drier than that. So anyways, um, that is uh, where we went, Katui County. So what we did on our first day is we visited this village and this sand dam. They wanted a sand dam. This river kept being overlooked by the county. The county is who tells us where sand dams can go and allows us to build them. This river, for some reason, has been passed over and passed over and passed over. So Church World Service went in and said, hey, we have the funds. Please let us do this river for this community. They said yes. So they had two months to build it. They took two weeks. They were so excited to get the sand dam. So as you can see on a new sand dam, you can see that what it is, is it's a cement berm. Also, they'll place a lot of rocks. And you can see in this other picture, a lot of rocks here. So um, they bring sand above it. They bring sand below it. You see the big pit hole over here on the right-hand side of the small picture. picture. That is actually kind of a big borehole for them for right now. And they can go dig there and they get water. And the way the sand dam works is there are absolute torrential rains that come down there. That sand flows over the berm, keeps building up over that big hole, um, eventually to line up to the top of this, the cement berm. Um, they think maybe it'll take five years for that. Um, but all that time, they can keep digging for water. Uh, anyways, um, so it keeps flowing and eventually it builds up. Uh, it will make, as you can see on the lower picture, it will eventually make lush green foliage all along the river. And, uh, and that, because that is a mature sand dam, but even now in the, the older, um, the newer sand dam, you can see the green and they do have mango trees with exposed roots 
but because there's water in there now, they're starting to produce mangoes again. And eventually the roots will be covered and they'll have major mango production out of their trees. Um, so anyways, uh, just so you know, Sam dams are ecologically sound and you can have more than one on a river. And this allows this community to help send their kids to school clean and healthy, helps with their vegetable growing, their gardens, they're watering their chickens, their domestic animals, cooking, um, uh, fields. And what we are doing also with this community is we are teaching them how to farm um, drought resistant crops and how to water their fields uh, in a way that is uh, better for um, the environment and water retention um, and using less water. So those are things that we're doing for that community. But then if you look at the mature dam, um, I have that it's the famous one. It's from the Women in Water in Rural Kenya, Kenya video that we put out years ago, like mm, 12 years ago. It was always on the CD. <clears throat> so anyways, that is what a 16-year-old sand dam looks like. They have a bore well. That community is um, one of the first communities. It's actually two communities together. And they are uh, just doing an amazing job. Uh, that is all lush and green. That is between 25 and 40% full of water on any given day. And they have so much water that they uh, now share it with the schools. Um, if you want to move into their community, uh, it is 50 shillings to join the um, to, to join the water part of it. Uh, that water part of it um, has allowed them to uh, have a savings. So they have 500,000 shillings and a savings right now. Um, and it is uh, about $3,200. And then they also have a second account that is 150,000 shillings, about $1,200 that they use for loans. So say the crops aren't um, sellable yet, and, but you got to pay for your kid to go to school. You can borrow the money and pay it back. Now, these communities um, are uh, amazing in that they have, they set up boards. There's a president, there'll be a treasurer, there'll be committee members, and um, that is how the decisions are made on how the water is distributed um, and the fees and the savings and the loans. Anyways, this is just a picture of that, um, <laughs> of the 16 year old sand dam and the man with the piece of paper on his back there. Uh, he is actually church world service staff from Nairobi. And he was really worried about uh, drinking that water out of the well. Uh, but Mary Obieri, who is in charge of all the programs in Kenya and is famous uh, in every village over there, all the little girls are named Mary. Uh, she walked right up there and took that container from him and drank the water. And because uh, it is a sand dam, it is filtered and filtered and filtered through that sand. And that is about the only water that you can drink safely uh, when you go to Kenya that won't upset your tummy. And here's the video. Mary just walks right up there and uh, drinks the water. He's a little nervous. See, he's just not sure he wants to drink it. And here she comes. Just drink the water, she says. It's good for you. <laughs> and you can even drip it out because it goes right back down into the sand dam. <laughs> and then I'm going to end by saying this is my friend, Nancy. Um, I met her. She's from the village. Um, the community for the first sand dam that's four months old. And we got our picture taken. We were in a big group and it happened to be by her. And they, uh, staff in Kenya had given us these hats and they were absolutely a godsend in that sun for us, but they snap up. And so I had, I had it snapped up and I looked like I was, should have been in Australia in the outback. And that cracked her 
up. And she and I just became fast friends. And we walked back to the cars together. I got a hug. She asked if I'd see her the next day. I said, yes, I will. She brought me that bag that you can see in my hand, that's all handmade. And inside of it were two huge guavas that we got to uh, take back with us. And I, um, we peeled them and ate them and shared them with the, uh, between all the staff that night for dinner. And I can say about her is she takes everything that we teach her and she runs with it. And she doesn't do it by just a little, she does it by a lot. And she actually won best farmer of the year uh, for the communities that gather for this farm day. Um, she won that last year because she took um, our lessons in growing those crops, um, drought resistant crops. And she didn't do just a little patch on her land. She did her entire piece of property. And so she has an abundance an abundance of crops. And so it's really helping her um, monetarily. She also sets on the board for that community and helps with the water and helps make the decisions. Now, the last thing that I wanted to say, because I know this is going a little long, is the one thing that we heard from community to community to community is if you take any of these women over there in these communities, <sighs> and you give them bees to make honey, chickens to lay eggs, and goats to produce milk. They take that money and they send their kids to school. And so no matter what we give them, yes, chickens help them. They, they, they can They can have little chicks to sell. They can sell the big chickens once they get a lot of chickens. They can... Um, we, we teach them how to incubate the eggs, uh, and they can sell the eggs. They can go buy to the markets and they can buy better fruit and foods for their families. But the number one thing we heard is it helps them send their kids to school because in Kenya, it is free at elementary, but then any higher education beyond that to get like what we would consider our middle school, high school is a fee to go in a uniform. And the men there don't like their money to go to education. So we gotta get the women to have the money to send the kids. So it all comes full circle and they get their educations. That's what you do. That's the difference you make for all these women and these kids in Kenya. And thank you so much for raising funds.